Around two weeks ago, we got our first ever teaser for Prehistoric Planet 2. And then not too much later, we got the guide to all the episodes in this upcoming season. But now, Apple TV Plus has blessed us with their first ever official trailer, which shows us more footage from the previous teaser trailer and a lot more of the new creatures coming. And today, we're going to break down the trailer and discuss all the newly revealed creatures in this trailer. Hello my co-highs, hope you're all doing well. I am your host Tyranno Senpai, and welcome to today's coverage of Prehistoric Planet 2. Over a week ago, we theorized what kind of dinosaurs would be appearing in the new season, and I think I'm going to let the video speak for itself. Obviously, this list will become obsolete as more trailers come out, and of course, when the new season releases in a little over a month from now. That said, with this new trailer, we have a whole new set of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures to take a look at. For this particular video, I'll be trying to avoid talking about scenes we've already seen in the teaser trailer, since we already covered that in the past. So without further delay, let's dive in. In the establishing shot, we got a new look at the Tarchia. Now, if you guys watched the video where we talked about the episode guide, the synopsis describes two young Tarchia wandering around the desert searching for water. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and assume the two Tarchia we see here are the two youngsters that were described in the guide. Nothing much else to comment on this shot. The next segment we'll look at shows us another shot of two Pachycephalosaurus in what appears to be a dried up savanna. Now in the episode guide it says that a herd of these dinosaurs travels through a drought infected landscape in search of resources. This is probably one of the establishing shots we get of this particular dinosaur. What's interesting is that these particular Pachycephalosaurus are a duller color than the two we saw in the teaser shown on Apple TV+. Plus. So I'm going to assume that these individuals seen here are females, and I'm all for depictions of sexual dimorphism in my dinosaur documentaries. The very next shot shows a Nanooksaurus laying low, as if ambushing its prey. Now from the teaser trailer, we can infer that this shot takes place before the Tyrannosaur lunges for the Ornithomimus herd. I didn't mention this in the previous video, but seeing as how the poster for this season is a Nanooksaurus and its baby, I think this individual is hunting for its young. In the previous season, we saw the Tyrannosaurus make its chicks learn to hunt for themselves. So perhaps we'll see how Tyrannosaurus, or at least Nanooksaurus, take care of their young at earlier stages of growth. Following this, we are treated to a herd of sauropods. Judging by looks alone, these don't look like any of the sauropods we've seen in the previous season. But what's interesting is that we may actually have seen this dinosaur's corpse in the teaser trailer. What am I getting at? My theory is that these titanosaurs are Alamosaurus. I could get into my reasoning for this conclusion, but I think I'll wait until later in the video. Now get ready folks, because what came next was so shocking, my eyes are still bulging from disbelief. The next segment shows us not one, but two heavily adorned Triceratops jousting with one another. Now I'm fully aware that the horns we see of the mounted Triceratops skeletons are just showing the bone. Whereas in real life, the horns would have been covered in a keratinous sheath. But how in the cinnamon toast crunch hell are these dinosaurs able to lift those heads that high with those giant ass horns? I am willing to suspend my disbelief, but I think I deserve an explanation. And don't try to pull the Taurosaurus argument because Triceratops and Taurosaurus have been confirmed to be two totally different dinosaurs. Please, I need one of you guys to explain the reality of this. Jokes aside, I'm quite excited to see large herbivores participate in interspecies combat. I honestly can't remember the last time I saw Ceratopsians joust each other in a paleo documentary since Walking with Dinosaurs 3D. Anyway, moving on from the Triceratops and their absurdly large horns, we are shown a group of baby Isosaurus. It looks like my prediction from the previous discussion video might be true and that we'll actually see the deleted scene with the sauropodlets fleeing from Rajasaurus. Speaking of Rajasaurus, we've still yet to see our elusive Abelosaurid. However, if we're seeing the Isosaurus sauropodlets, there might be a chance that Rajasaurus might come in this upcoming season. 
Now, what I would like to see is if these young sauropods are able to run on their hind legs like I've seen in some paleo art. I know it seems weird, but Prehistoric Planet has shown us time and again they have no problem showing speculative behaviors. And it looks like we're going to be seeing a lot more marine reptiles than we've seen before, as the next scene shows us what looks like a type of mosasaur. I have looked high and low for any information on what genera this might be, but I can't come up with a concrete answer. But if I were to hazard a guess, I want to say that this is Plotosaurus, which according to what information I could find, was a derived mosasaur that lived between 72 and 66 million years ago. So it fits comfortably in the time period, but it's still too early for me to make a concrete answer. Velociraptor is now 100% confirmed to be in the next season thanks to this shot here. Not really a whole lot of information to go off on here, but I'm assuming this will take place in the Badlands episode. The next dinosaur to appear in the trailer, however, is a Dromaeosaur, but definitely not a Velociraptor. There are a few species that this could represent, but what makes this raptor unique is that it has an unusually long snout even for a raptor. This leads me to conclude that this might be a representation of Austroraptor. All I can say is that this is a welcomed addition to the documentary, as I am a big fan of The Isle, which will include Austroraptor in the Vima branch at some point. Cue the alert! We have three small pachycephalosaurs in this season as well. I really had to do some digging to try to conclude what type of genera this might be, and my research has led me to believe that these represent Pranocephalae, a small Asian pachycephalosaur that lived in the Campanian and Maastrichtian stages of the Cretaceous period. So once again, it fits nicely in the time period. Not only that, but we see these same dinosaurs being confronted by huge Tarchia. Further evidence to suggest that these could be Pranocephalae. We won't know until more information is given. Mosasaurus makes a grand return to the season as we see one leap out of the water with an elasmosaurid in its jaws. Not really much else to say here other than this shot reminds me of whales or dolphins breaching out of the water. I will say, I do find it cliche that we're shown a mosasaur hunting a plesiosaur again, as if that trope hadn't been hammered into our minds for decades. But still, I'm excited to see my favorite ocean-going lizard once again. The next dinosaur was a bit of a mystery to me. In my reaction, I assumed that these were a type of dromaeosaur. But upon closer inspection, I noticed something. If these are dromaeosaurs, where is the sickle claw that all dromaeosaurs are known to have. I honestly was scratching my head, racking my brain and the internet for answers. And after a little bit of looking, I think I found a possible candidate, Imperobator, a small theropod dinosaur that lived in the Maastrichtian stage of Cretaceous. Once again, a perfect fit in the time period. Now what's interesting is that they appear to be hunting some sort of Ornischian dinosaur on the ice. And no matter where I looked, I could not, for the life of me, find what sort of dinosaur this could be. So I am open to suggestions if you have any in the comments. We get a longer look at the Nanusaurus hunts where it looks like it succeeds in bringing one down, but nothing else to comment on. Next up, we see another couple familiar faces. The Mongolian Titan from the previous season makes a return. I'm still not sure whether or not this dinosaur has been given a name or if it even exists, but it's still nice to see a cool looking sauropod making a return but it also appears Edmontosaurus will be making a return in this season as well. We get a new scene with our mysterious Troodontid that I still believe to be Almas, as I still haven't heard of any other possible contenders this could be. And it looks like we'll be taking a trip to Italy, because we have confirmation that Tethys Hadros and two of its babies will be appearing in this season. I gotta say, I've never heard of this dinosaur before until one of you guys commented on the genera. And after doing some background searching, the vibes check out. Next, we take a trip to a frozen body of water where a plesiosaur and her calf surface from a hole in the ice. Once again, I am stumped on what this is meant to represent, as the head is different from Elasmosaurus and Tarangosaurus. So if anyone has any suggestions, I am open to them. We then see what I'm assuming to be the Velociraptor with an egg in its mouth, followed by a shot of two very fluffy, and very adorable babies. Honestly, these babies are so cute, my head might actually explode from the overload of the, the adorableness. We then see an Isosaur struggling to climb up a sandy hill. This makes me wonder if this individual will become a potential target to nearby predators, as this would look like a bad time for the sauropod to be ambushed given the compromised position it's in. The juvenile Zalmoxis makes a return in the series, floating on a bit of driftwood. This raises some serious concerns, as I really don't want to see this little guy perish. 
but also it makes me wonder if this is meant to show how some dinosaurs ended up in different parts of the world through drifting to new lands. It would be an interesting way to showcase this sort of phenomenon, and it looks like we'll be getting a new variant of Ammonite in this series as we see a couple of them swimming around in the sea, as well as some other cephalopods along the seafloor. Funnily enough, these cephalopods look familiar to me, but I can't quite pinpoint from where. The final segment gives us a longer look at the standoff between the Tyrannosaurus and the Quetzalcoatlus, and this time we get a clear look at the corpse the T-Rex is standing over, and it is in fact a sauropod. The corpse also brings us back to the, my theory that the sauropod seen earlier might be Alamosaurus, as the corpse looked a, a lot like the sauropod from earlier. So yes, I do believe we are seeing live Alamosaurus in this new season. And that's it regarding the new trailer that was dropped. We got to see a few more familiar creatures as well as a wide range of some new animals making their way into the series. Some of them making their first ever appearance in any form of paleo media, would you believe? Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the trailer, what do you think some of these genera might actually be, and if you're excited for the next season of Prehistoric Planet. We're 20 days away from the release date as of this recording, so I hope you're all ready. That said, it's time to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more Prehistoric Planet videos and dinosaur content in general, leave a like, subscribe today, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything new, link to my Discord and my Twitch in the description down below, and until next time, this is Tyrannosepi signing off. Alrighty then, take care now, bye bye then.